Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya, weird news, hot gossip, and scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, hey, happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. Well, that was sassy. I know. I flipped off the camera. I'm feeling spunky today. I can't believe it. Uh, this is week... Oh, my God. What 74. Week is it? 74. It has been 74 weeks here at camp. I'm excited for next week because next week's going to be 75. But why am I rushing? I have a great show prepared, as do you. Yeah, this is going to be inspirational, relaxing, as well as energizing. And just really, like, it's going to start your morning off in the best way possible. Unless you're listening to this in the afternoon, then it's really going to just, you know, end the day on a great note. I love that some people might view this show as relaxing because, like, nothing about it as we do it is relaxing. But maybe it's a, a mental break for some people. Come back. I just had a crazy travel home from the city. Do tell. I have been doing this thing in the city that I'm going to talk about in a couple weeks on the show. When it's all done, I'm keeping you on your toes. But essentially, New York City unveils like a new like subway car pretty frequently. Ever since we moved here, I feel like there's always like a new subway situation happening. I'm always getting on an old one now. So, always. I know, right? Where was it? The old <laughs> gross ones from the 70s. But no, I was on a brand new train today. And like the new feature they're unveiling on this line was that each car is connected by some sort of like opening so you don't have to like go in each train like out through doors right like so like one like big tube like the big buses like the mega buses that have yes. the accordion thing in it which is to like two buses which is so crazy to me how do you like navigate that it's like almost like when you step in it it's it's like a, it's like a like, like a, a desk right like it's a record round. player mm -hmm. yeah and it, it connects it so i see it pull up and i'm like oh my fucking god not me, getting, not me getting the luxury subway line. And I step inside and it's looking posh, it's looking sparkly, but I'm smelling it. I'm like, oh, oh my God, so New York, brand new subway line, already smells like deep piss. Like deep urine. I'm Ew, not like, deep urine. No, it's like, you know when like the urine's not fresh, it's been sitting, it's been, it's been, it's been doing its thing. Yeah, and it's cloudy. Oh, well, yeah, now we're giving visuals. I'm just giving um smell, smell tests, scratch and sniff, guys. We're still sending those out in the mail per episode. Could you imagine? That I love that idea. Fun. Um, but yeah, no, it was a really interesting um, ride back. And then when I got off the subway, our neighbor was on the same train as me. So we got to walk back together and chit chat and catch up. So the new train stank like an old train. Yeah. And I was like, well, what's the point? I don't even care. And I think too, I was like, well, what if the piss was in a different car and I never would have had to deal with this? But now since the whole thing's like a big open hallway, now the smell just lingers. That's what I'm getting to the point of this is. But I'm just curious, did they say why they would do that, where they would connect all of them? Because in my head, for a safety feature, you would want to contain said situation if any situation was occurring. Unless you're in the unsafe train and you're like, well, thank God it's open so I can get out to the next one really quickly. So it's kind of like okay. a catch-22. You're, oh my God, you're right. The lighting was fierce. It was giving bright. It was giving fresh. The smell was not, so. I was on the subway yesterday and I texted you because we were stuck at a standstill and they said the car in front of us is dirty and needs to be wiped down i was like what everybody was looking at each other like what does that mean not us on the scene there's a serial piss pisser on the uh, on the trains right now oh i wonder if that's what it was oh my god this is the same attack to the subways that we're on an sp wasn't didn't someone pull out a knife on your subway too oh yeah that was scary that was yesterday as well, well yeah. you have to tell the story now because i can't say that and everyone's like well what happened well i to be honest i don't know what happened it was just i get on the subway the doors closed behind me and it was already too late before i noticed like what was going on because i was like oh this car is kind of empty it's usually a bad sign and I get on and, and this man is yelling and he just, he had a knife and he was yelling at this lady and nothing happened. Yeah. And yeah, I made it to my destination on time. Welcome to New York. Welcome to New York. We've been waiting for oh, you. I don't even touch that about it. I know it sounds crazy, but like when there's like, like what, 10 million people living in in like a four block, like a four mile radius, like there's gonna, you're gonna interact with some crazy different people. For the most part, I feel very safe here. I love it here. I'm not trying to like shit on the subway, but I'm also gonna tell you that it stank today. Mm. Stink. I wonder if they maybe they sprayed it down so they were like, okay, this is new, but it has that like weird new car smell, and we needed to really just blend in with 
with everything around it. That's a really weird way to think about it, but maybe. We saw a juicy rat yesterday too. Oh my God. And he was like kind of like drunk on his mama. He was like, where am I going? He was like left to right. He was crazy. He didn't give a fuck that people were walking like right on top of him. I was like, this is scary. Yeah. And if you looked at him closely, he was holding a little cane and he had a top hat with a cigar and he was trying to sell us fake Yankees tickets. And I said, leave us alone, Mr. Rat. I know your schemes. And he said, oh, shucks. You two know me too well. And then he went back to his little booth and then closed his shop for the day. The little sign turned. It said, close. Enrique the Rat. Very cute. Can I tell you what happened when I went to the grocery store? Yeah. Oh, my God. I love when we don't tell each other things in real life. And then we can have real, honest reactions on the show. And it's like deep combo, too. Like, this is it doesn't get deeper than this. Wait, tell me what happened. So you're making a video later and you asked me to go. Well, you said you were going to get it. And I was like, I got it. Don't worry. My duty was to pick up bread and bologna. You know me, guys. Does that sound shocking that Zachariah would need bread and bologna? It's a typical Zachariah video. So I go up to the deli and they didn't have any like pre-cut and usually they have them like pre-cut. Yeah, usually they're in uh, Oscar Mayer. Did you check near the bacon? Because that's where it would be near the hot dogs and bacon. It wouldn't be at the deli. Oh, you want to, oh my God, the ones that come in like a little CD case. Yeah, that's that's what I expected, but I was perfectly fine. They got me the deli. But. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, they would have had that over there. Okay, you're so right. But anyway, I, and honestly, I should have done that and this story wouldn't have existed. We don't need meat. So exactly. how would you know what the meat was? So, Be kind to yourself. Thank you. So I walk up to the deli <clears throat> and I'm like, fuck, how much do I, like how much does he need? And then I'm like, shit, how much is a pound of bologna? Is that what you purchased? So I walk up. And I'm like, I'm going to get more than he needs. So I go, I had two pounds of bologna. And you did he, not get two pounds of bologna. He leans over and he's like, what? And I was like, oh my God, is that too much? Meanwhile. That's too much. S Club 7 is blasting over the speakers above my head. So I'm like, oh my God. And then I have to yell. I'm like, I ha- a half a pound of bologna. In and he normal goes, circumstances, you would have loved S Club 7 blasting over your head. Yeah, but I could feel my pulse like pulsing through my neck. I was nervous. I don't eat meat. And I feel like this was really like pushing like the meat eating agenda against me. And I wasn't here for it. So anyway, I tell him I need a half a pound of bologna. And he gives me a look. He's like, bologna? And I was like, why is he questioning me again? Then I'm really like self-conscious. And then I pretended I was texting. Well, I really appreciate you doing that. I'm sorry that I didn't tell you where the bologna was. You did get me the boar's head bologna. I did a sample little taste test. And it's better bologna than Oscar Mayer would have provided us. So you got me high quality um, bologna. I'm sorry that it was stressful. That's okay. I just needed to really like air out my grievances because I'm, I'm not a meat eater. I'm not a meat buyer. I'm not a meat seller. No, but now you're a meat buyer. I need to add that to your resume because people have been asking lately, like, is Jonathan on the market to buy meat? Meat, And I always say no, but now you do. So it's like you're growing and you're changing every day. And nothing about bologna looks like sexy to me. I'm looking at it, I'm like, that is so nauseating. Sorry, no offense. I know people like bologna, but... It's like when people say something offensive and then and then follow it up with no offense. Like, I love bologna and I'm taking offense to this. Okay, then take it if you must. Anyways, <laughs> this was not part of our intro that we planned. Welcome back to the show. Banjui. How's everyone doing today? Can I get a woo-woo? We can't hear you. I hate that. I hate that. I took a hike when people like you repeat it back. I hate that. No, we literally, we can't hear you. This is a one-way combo. Oh, no. There's a couple cameras in the back and they're flashing us. <laughs> Is that weird to say? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Anyways. So what did we do? Let's talk about what we did. I had a really exciting Monday. So maybe by the time this airs, maybe not. I was doing my final video for my Duncan contract. I do like multiple videos for them a year for like ads. Um, and it's like probably like one of my favorite brands to work with because as you guys know, like I genuinely am a huge fan of the brand. But for years, I've been begging them every single cycle on this ad cycle. I'm always like, hey, can one of my videos, can I come to corporate and make donuts with you? And they always laugh it off. And I think the third year in a row of me asking, they're like, oh, wait, I think he really wants to do this. So I finally got to visit Duncan World Headquarters and make donuts with the donut chef himself. Donut Dan. You were glowing. You were floating. You were in your element. It was really exciting. So their headquarters is in Canton, Massachusetts, which is like a little uh, northeast, southwest, west of Boston, if you're looking at a map. So it was really exciting. We drove from New York, slept over in a hotel at night, and I got to go and I got to meet some of the social team that I've never met in real life before, only through like Zoom. And I got to get taken down into like the lair of the building where they have this entire like kitchen set up dedicated just to donuts for them to test recipes out. 
um, in like creation for the the global menu. Like everything starts there, and it was really cool. Um, uh, you'll see it in the video, but if it didn't come out in time, I can give you a little a little sneak peek. But the guy Donut Dan, who is like head of donut creation there, he made me these like welcome donuts. And I'm from New Bedford, as some of our campers know that. So a large population of New Bedford and Fall River, Massachusetts is Portuguese. Like I'm half Portuguese, a little bit more than half. So I grew up and I'm always eating Portuguese food. So he made me a welcome donut that was New Bedford Portuguese inspired. So it was like a saffron savory donut with a linguisa patty on top. And then he sauteed onions, put it on top of the patty and then drizzled it in this thing called Mozambique sauce, which is like really prevalent. It's like, I was like beer and saffron sauce. It's so good. And he made that for me as like a, hey, welcome. It had nothing to do with the video. It was just like a, so happy you came. And I just felt like that was above and beyond. I was shocked. It was. And he had like a lot of conversation about it because he was from the area too. And then he made the other donut, which was like Madeira and and coffee syrup. Yeah. Coffee syrup is a really big thing where I'm from. It's like, uh, I don't, it's not really instant coffee. It's literally like, oh, you put it in milk, like chocolate milk or strawberry milk. We have coffee milk too. It's like literally like a liquefied like coffee and syrup. I still don't think I've had it. Yeah, I don't love it because I feel like the only time you ever have it is in a big glass of milk. And I'm just, I'm honest, I'm not competing in our 2% gallon challenge yeah. with the Galentine's Day girls. I'm just not doing it. Somebody did volunteer, so. Yeah, and she got really sick. We had to hold her hair in the stall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with the milky curds. So he made me a coffee, he made me a coffee syrup milk donut or whatever. And then he had like a Madeira wine glaze, which is another huge Portuguese thing from where I'm from. I just felt really welcomed. Yeah. And then I got to make glazed donuts. Uh-huh. Walk and us through that. It was really cool. Like they, they had them already in the proving cabinet, fried them, glazed them. And I recorded the whole thing in full transparency here, you guys. I looked at the footage and I was like, oh my God, this is like really chaotic. I was very stressed because I want every video to be like perfect and fun. And like they did so much work to get me there and like make this experience. And I'm looking at the stuff and I'm like, this is like not making sense. So I just had a full mental breakdown about an hour and a half ago trying to edit this video. And I got it to a point now where I'm like, wait. Calm down. What do I always do? Freak out. I catastrophize. Catastrophize. I catastrophize everything. I think everything I make sucks. I think everything I do is not good. And then when it's done and I see people like it, I'm like, oh, it actually was good. So I'm really trying to work on this year, enjoying what I do and trusting that people are going to enjoy it because I think everything I make is going to be bad. And then after I got to a point of it being good, I'm like, wait. It's actually pretty funny. Yeah. It's just like a lot of content that you're shaving down into um, into like one minute. I know. I just want them to like me and I want everyone to fucking like me. And it's um it's really definitely one of my my downfalls. I need to I don't I need to be okay with people hating me. Honestly, campers, can you guys start hating me? No, please don't. Somebody left a comment and it sat with me all night. I know. Well we're not gonna talk about no, it. No, we won't. I don't want to put anyone on blast, but I was like, oop, okay. I guess that's a backhanded <laughs> compliment. The dog upstairs is chirping. Are you joining the choir, little doggy? If you hear it in the background, it's okay. We live in New York. I'm sorry we don't live in a podcast studio. Anyways, that was fun. Did you enjoy yourself? I liked it. It was really cool to like, you know, see the people that we had met before and, and really get to see what it's like in the little taste testing kitchen. Also, I don't know what what proofing is. It's just like let the yeast rise, right? It's like just like you heat it up. Yeah, you you, you bring it to like a above um like room temperature kind of like between like 89 and like 99, I would guess. I'm just throwing numbers out there and it kind of like gives us some time to breathe. Let it breathe. I've always wanted to go to Tour Factory since that episode of Arthur with the green potatoes. Just say the green potato chip episode of Arthur. It probably like changed my life in some aspects. And in that episode, they PBS would do these like weird transitions where there'd be like real life stories at the end of the episode with like elementary schools around the country. Or, yeah, yeah. I don't even know. But they went to the Cape Cod Chip Factory. Campers, anybody out there? Was anybody in the end credits of Arthur or any PBS show? Don't you know somebody or do I know them? Oh, I do. Who was on Zoom? Yeah. And they had the poster in their house. Um, I don't think she had the poster in her house. And I don't think she was, she wasn't like on the cast, but she was like, you know, where they would go and visit schools and stuff. She was in one of those clips. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I'm thinking something different. I know someone who was on Zoom who has a giant cast poster in their house. Because they they filmed Zoom like in Connecticut now. I think they filmed it in Boston. I think that's why the, the Cape Cod chip, I think the PBS station that was doing all this content was like out of like Boston. Yeah. There's a lot of like random TV things like Maury was there. Maury was the in Connecticut. WWE. Oh, that's, that's Connecticut, in Connecticut too, too. I think that's the proximity to New York, but not having to pay the city taxes. We passed the WWE Center 
so frequently. We should stop in one day. I know. I say, where's Ray Mysterio? Where are the Bella Twins? Where's The Undertaker? I can keep going. Where's John Cena? Where's The Rock? Where's Ray Mysterio? I know my wrestlers, baby. Stone Cold Steve Austin was oh, my favorite. my God. Just call him daddy. Stop. He's cute. <laughs> But yeah, no, Dunkin' was amazing. Um, I just like really want to shout out uh, that brand because they put me on very early and they let me have fun on camera. They yeah. really do. I can say, I want to make this video and they always just say, Zach, do your thing. Well, I work with other brands and they're like, well, we love that idea. Don't do anything that you wrote down and do this. And I'm like, okay. And guess what are the ones that work? The ones that you are smart and savvy enough. You're a business person. You know how to how to yeah. do this. And people love to watch entertaining content. That is fun. I asked, Vita Coco asked me to make a video for Christmas and they were like, do whatever you want. We literally don't care. Like, don't even say our brand. They were like really hand off with it. It was like, oh yeah, that was crazy. I know. And I was like, okay, I'm going to play this like chaotic, like coworker character I like to play. So she's like a nurse and she's always like got the craziest things going on. Like she bought a jacuzzi out of a catalog. She has a sty, her molars impacted like she just has a lot going on and i was like i wonder if they'll go for this character and they totally were fine with it i posted the video and it did so well and people loved it and i was like this is how brands should work with creators it's like just let them have fun and don't worry too much about the ad part of it because that's what turns people off people just want to be at a baseline entertained on the internet i know i do as the french say trust the process Speaking of content creation, I know we're really talking a lot about work today, but it's what we do. That's well, it's been a really busy, it's been a busy like four days. I know, but we, this was a cool one. We had a really cool opportunity this week, too. Do you guys know the show Traders? Is on, anybody watching? On Peacock? It's essentially this game show that combines a bunch of reality stars from different corners of um TV universe. And it's not just NBC. Yeah, it's like so far it's like Bachelor, Big Brother, Real Housewives. I don't know Survivor, any other Real Housewives. Oh, um, Lo not Love on the Spectrum. Love Island. Love Island, yeah. And they just go into a house and it's kind of like a murder mystery type yeah. deal, but there's money on the line. There's like 22 people and two people are um, traitors. And you have like the other people who are the faithfuls have to figure out who the traitors are. And of course, the traitors are lying and everybody's like, I swear I'm a faithful. Yeah, it's kind of like Clue. Yes, exactly. But and it's fun because it's reality TV stars and they're obviously all over the top. Yeah, and it's drama. It's so dramatic. Yeah, so Peacock reached out to my management like two weeks ago. And they're like, hey, is Zach a fan of the show? Like, we're having all of the people on the show come to New York for one day in this big hotel and we're getting a bunch of content creators to come and make content with them to promote the show. And I was like, we were already watching at the time because I didn't like it initially when I watched it. And then you watch the second episode by yourself and you're like, Zach, you need to retry this. Like, I promise you're going to love it. And then I really got into it. Then I got the email, which was so cool. So I got to film with Real Housewives of Atlanta star, um, Phaedra Parks. She's also currently on Married to Medicine. So she's a Bravo celebrity. Mm -hmm. She's kind of like the star of Traders right now. If you're if you're gonna watch the show, like I'm not giving any spoilers away because it really is. If you love reality TV and competitions, like this one is really fun on Peacock. Um, and I'm not like plugging that. They're not paying me, so I'm being honest. But um, no, Phaedra was just a dream to work with. We got there, or well, they were a little bit behind, but she didn't feel like drained at all from her like insane shooting day because they're just like filming with like influences all day she was so sweet and she reminded me of dolly parton like just the way she spoke she did give she, big dolly energy and she was so sweet and she was always yes and and she took direction very well from you and she like i don't know she wasn't like i don't know what i expected but she was just so pleasant i kind of expected a diva to be honest because she's like a real housewives like star and a bravo celebrity i feel like this isn't like their ideal day to like film bits with like content creators. You know what I mean? And but she was just so happy to be there and very nice. And Sheree was there as well. If anybody watches Real Housewives of Atlanta, um, there was one point where our friend was filming with Sheree and they kind of wrapped up filming. We were all in the same room. And then he turned and he was like, uh, does anybody have any ideas? And I had whispered it to you and you were like, that's a good idea. Say it. So from across the room, I go, joggers. Um, I feel like I can't even explain that to anybody who doesn't understand, but uh, it was not something I should have said. I was like, oh shit, should I not have said that joke? I think it was a sore subject. Yeah. It was a joke on the show, but 
Not a joke on her. No. She said, not I got my face. Peter from Bachelor was there. Yeah, Bergie from Love Island was there. So nice. Everybody was so nice. Yeah, I think most people in the industry are really nice. We did talk about a couple divas on Patreon a couple episodes ago. That was a fun one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, we did. Sorry, I'm playing the Patreon. It was a really like juicy celebrity-filled episode of people that have wrote in who like knew celebrities that were divas. And I was like, wait, one of them was really surprising. The earpiece? Cabin 5 gets it. No, that was crazy. That but was no, shocking. it was fun. It was really great. And um, I love the show. So if you're looking for a new show, once again, I'm simply not being paid by them. I am being paid by Duncan. I'm just joking. No, I really am. But no, that is a really fun show. And then what else did we do? Oh, we have a really cool live event coming up. That's oh, not about yeah. us, but we were asked to do it. February 26th, we are going to be joining Cody Rigsby on stage in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, Cody Rigsby has it. He's on his book tour. I think he's doing his second leg of it or like a repeat study thing for his XOXO Cody, I believe the book is called. It's got to be his second. He started like a couple months ago. Yeah. So he just like, he hit us up and was like, hey, like I'm going to be in Atlanta. Like, can you guys come out and like do my live show with me? And we'll do some question and answer, some games, some like, I don't know, interview stuff. So we're going to be in Atlanta with Cody Rigsby. So any of our Peloton fans out there, we're really crossing the crossing the universe here crossing the t's and dot in the i's and that's going to be right after we get off of the cruise so we're gonna to have to take a day in between to really just cleanse our soul and our minds i hope my voice isn't hoarse because i feel like every time i'm on vacation i scream the entire time i don't know you get three michelob ultras in me and i just start getting guttural i turn into like i turn to a seagull and i'm about to rip your nose off like i'm scary but what can i do it's just the it's the cross it's the cross i simply bear it's, we like to have fun uh also tiktok has really been put and I know I keep saying this, but yesterday was like bad. They've just been pushing so much like cruise content to me of like, uh, like the cruise ships like hitting the sides of the docks and like the jetties and stuff. I'm like, why are you showing me this? Because Show me the fun shit. You're watching it. Like that's how the algorithm works. It's like they like, oh, they said, oh, he likes a cruise catastrophe. No, but like they get me. So I'm like. I feel like they're trying to trigger me. It's just like funny because I was so anti-cruise for so long. And I think if you want to be a hater, like it's easy to be a hater because like the footage is out there. But until you've held a Michelob Ultra at a karaoke bar at 10 p.m. on a cruise ship after eating your entire body weight at a buffet and you're sunburned, I don't want to hear it. That is luxury. That's life. That's what I'm meant to be doing. I'm built for cruising. You look at my body type. Yeah. The, BM, the BMI might be a little high, but <laughs> I'm high on life. <laughs> Cause, uh, Cause we're heading to the Caribbean, y'all. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back to Morning Announcements Campers. This is the part of the show where we share articles with you that you might have missed that we want you to spread like a wildfire. Attention campers, our tennis courts have been repaved thanks to the wonderful people at Pete's Paving Pagoda. Uh, additional great news, uh, we also have received a grant from the state which has allowed us to purchase 14,000 tennis balls. So to celebrate, commemorate, and masturbate, we are going to be launching all 14,000 tennis balls into the lake, which will all be retrieved by hand by uh, by none other than Samich. Yeah, and then the campers can just use pine cones to play tennis because you don't need any of those balls. Yeah, who needs them? <laughs> okay, so let's get into our morning announcement. That was really crafty. I also like that we're getting state funding here at camp. I didn't think we were like on that program, but that's... Really exciting to hear. Also, a paving pagoda. Yeah. That was an interesting choice. Because when I hear pagoda, I think of piercing pagoda, where I got yeah. my ears pierced. But um, it wasn't my choice. I didn't. I didn't form the LLC. They did. Oh, you, you're so right. You're so you're so nifty with the grant research you do. So can I get into my story? Yeah, sure. Um, it's really not that long, but this article is coming from abc7ny.com, and it's titled. New Jersey officer delivers food after Uber Eats driver arrested. I'm so excited to hear about this. Officers Mike Zevalensky and Alex Treddy were on a routine patrol in Florham Park, New Jersey at 8.30 p.m. when they ran a plate of somebody who was driving by. The driver did, in fact, have an outstanding traffic warrant, so they pulled her over and arrested her. Why are they allowed to run plates if there's no, like, criminal activity i kind of i'm like am i am i being crazy for being mm -hmm. against that no 
I think that's like, well, okay, she had a warrant. I don't know her life, but I also yeah. think it's like not fair. If I'm driving normal, like mind your business. Right. Get and, out of my lane. And nowhere in the articles that I read did they say she was doing anything wrong. I think they were just running plates. Yeah. It's like, okay, you're so bored. Well, I don't know. We have a tennis court that needs work. So come <laughs> come down here and help police. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm getting on my line. So it turns out that this driver was an Uber Eats driver and they were en route to deliver somebody's meal. Damn it. So they did, in fact, arrest her, as I said. And they pulled her car into a tow-free lot. Thank God. Uh, and they decided to finish the job. So Officer Treddy drove the McDonald's order to the Uber Eats customer. He explained the situation to the person and um, handed the customer the bag and he was on his way. The officer didn't know it at the time, but the customer who answered the door was none other than Snooki's husband, Gianni. <laughs> Gianni was the recipient of the DoorDash order? Gianni was the one who ordered the McDonald's that this police officer was delivering to get out of here no way yeah i wasn't really going to share this story but that twist i just had to because i was like that is so random um so gianni did offer him a tip which the officer refused since he is a government official i have a couple questions i want to hear him how did he not recognize gianni the cop was young he was a young guy you don't know so that's the thing it's he's in like, he's a cop in new jersey in the I, area i know but it's the husband of the star of the show gianni doesn't really have a presence like we're we're super fans we're two gay men on a podcast we know everyone's plus one in the jersey shore universe of course we do but like this cop you know what he's doing he's cracking a beer He's watching the big game. He hates Taylor Swift on his television. And he's doing his thing. He doesn't know who Gianni is. He's not watching Jersey Shore. I don't know. I feel, especially if he saw the name on the, the order, which brings me to question number two. How did he get the name on the order? Because Uber Eats doesn't put it on the receipt that's on the bag. Yes, so it does. It Absolutely does? Absolutely it does. Uber Ab Eats does. Absolutely it does. It has to because they're carrying multiple orders. They have to know whose name is on what thing. Well, they ha Yeah, they have the name. But like for you, it's like we we put ours down as like our first name and our last initial. Yeah, so it probably said Gianni S for Snooky. But he had to, but he had to know the address. So I'm like, is the ad? Did he take the phone? Oh, like you're is right. it confiscated upon Listen, being arrested? I think these are semantics that we're not going to figure out today. Well, then if she wasn't, if she didn't tell him, you know, she probably she had to have offered the information because he would have needed a search warrant to look through her phone. What is confirmed is that the cop had nothing better to do than run this woman's plates and then finish a DoorDash order. Get busy. Because clearly he's like, how unbusy can you be to finish someone else's job? I don't know. You know what I mean? Gianni's waiting at the window. Who's that McDonald's? I think it'll be here in a minute, Nicole. The kid's got the nuggets. What do you think he ordered? Uh, That's more fun to talk one about. One of the biggest burgers. He's, Maybe a number three, medium. He's giving me double quarter pounder with cheese, no onion. He hates onion. Why do they call it a double quarter pounder? Why don't you just call it a half pound? Because it's not a half pound burger. It's two quarter pounder burgers. They don't have a half pound burger. Okay, I'm not good at math, but you one don't, quarter pound, yeah, one quarter pound, one half. You don't, but they're not, they don't, they don't combine the patties. They're two individual patties. You oh. Two, the double, which is Greek for two, <laughs> quarter pounder. Okay. So the quarter pounder is a really luxurious item at McDonald's. It, it, it's like one of the ones that doesn't come frozen. Is that the one that comes with the bread in the middle? No, that's the Big Mac. You're uh, learning so much about meat this week. I'm so proud of you. You're really on a meat journey. I wonder how the bread comes to them. Because it's like not really a, a bottom bun. It's just like a middle slice. Have you seen that video of them getting the dehydrated sliced onion or diced onion? No. Yeah, it comes in a big bag and it's all dry. And then they pour water into like a big bucket with the the dried like powdered onion and then it rehydrates almost like space food oh they're like wake up wake up yeah. again i'm not above it yeah honestly i'm like wait i've literally had a i've had a mcdouble okay when they had a little i think it has that onion on it i think a mcdouble does i don't, I don't know. know i've had the diced onion there i'm like i'm never upset actually should i get that later i'm obsessed honestly should we get that for dinner i don't I know i love their fries anyways i'm sorry uh no that's uh that's totally fine because that is the end of my story i that's... know snooks that's that on that. I could ask Nicole. I'll be like, Nicole, we literally just talked about you on the show. What did Gigi order? And she's like, don't ever call my husband Gigi. <laughs> Second of all, Gianni doesn't want to be involved. So the news station that was covering this, they did uh, take it upon themselves to go knock on the door. <laughs> 
to ask questions. I'm like, do you like, is it really that slow of a news day? Like things are going on in the world. My God. I think that area is just giving slow. It's like nothing's going on for the police, for the news. Well, she still has her Christmas decorations up. So I have another Don't question. Don't you dare slander her. her on this show. I'll draw the line there. That's a friend of the podcast, a friend of my heart, a woman who raised me with her crocodile stuffed animal and her drunken debauchery. That's a woman I stand by. I stand by that show. So what have you got? This is a really serious article. I need every camper to pull over. <laughs> put the put the e-brake up, put on the hazards, and really focus in on this one. This is breaking news. The article is titled, Rescue Cat Refuses to Eat Food Unless It Comes with a Side Salad. <laughs> okay. I can identify. <laughs> I read this and I was like, now hold on a minute. <laughs> hold on a damn minute. Who is this pretty kitty? Um, the article was written by Jack Barris Ford um, of Newsweek. You know what his title is? I had to write his title down because so I was like, Slay. What? He's the senior internet culture and trend reporter. Love that title. I love that he, he I know he gave himself that title. Because only someone who's a senior internet culture and trend reporter would know how to define themselves. I agree. It's probably his, t- like, he's probably deserving of that title. But, like, no one in the big boss office who understands what he's doing could come up with that title. I'm going to give myself that here at camp. Can I be the camp senior internet culture and trend reporter? Well, you are now. It's self appointed I think it's more you. We can fight over this later. Okay. (laughs) So, um, Dina Moeller. I'm so sorry if it's incorrect. But I'm going to go with Dina Moeller from Boston, Massachusetts, told Newsweek that from the moment she adopted Shaggy as a tiny kitten from the Northeast Animal Shelter in Salem, Massachusetts, in May 2021, she could tell he had an unusual relationship with food. Love the name Shaggy for a cat. I know, me too. I think it's a really cute name. She said, I noticed right away that he was really into whatever I was eating. And then she goes on to say, I had eaten a chicken Parmesan sandwich while he was sleeping. When he woke up, I guess he could still smell it and angrily screamed at me for 20 minutes. Now, if you (laughs) ate a chicken parm sandwich and didn't order me one and I woke up and could smell it, I think I would yell at you for 20 minutes. Yeah, and you have ground still. That's really rude. Do you ever go for an eggplant parm? It's never seen me eat one. No. Why? It just doesn't do it for me. Honestly, eggplant... It's a little never has done it for me. Yeah. If somebody's making it and I am a guest at said occasion. Yeah, you're polite. Or if it's like a wedding reception and that is the vegetarian option, I'll eat it. But I will never go out of my way ever to order it. It's just I don't want breaded vegetables with a giant slab of cheese on it. It's like either give me fried tofu or give me like a fresh vegetable. I don't I don't I don't love hot vegetables. I think I'm learning about myself. Yeah, that's okay to learn. That's yeah. good to learn. Thank you. I like anything hot, anything cold. I'm a glutton. So Dina had lost her beloved 21-year-old cat a month earlier. But with the pandemic and still in full swing, she was eager to adopt another feline companion. But listen to this part. She originally had her heart set on a gorgeous tortoise shell colored cat that she saw on the shelter's website. And then she said, um, I figured this kitten would be immediately snatched up since he was um, since he was so cute. I did notice that in the background of the picture, there was a black kitten. And I wondered about him, too. The black cat ended up being Shaggy. Oh. So she says, really pretty cat. And she's like, well, I know he'll be adopted. But, like, let me just check on Shaggy. And, like, black cats in Salem, people, like, sacrifice during the witch, the witch stuff. That's... They have, like, an issue in Salem because of that. Early on, she discovered Shaggy had worms and required a six-week course of medicine to eradicate them. During that time, I had to feed him plain chicken and rice. And that really boosted his demand for human food. Even after that, Dina struggled to find a cat food that didn't cause havoc with Shaggy's digestive system. It was around that time he started stealing my salad ingredients, she said. I was forever asking Siri to Google if a cat can eat things like lettuce, tomato, carrots, kale, avocados, etc. And started putting them on his side dish. Wait, can cats eat that? Yeah. Oh, probably no. Well, Yvette's going to come say no. Yeah, and I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Shaggy's stomach issues soon cleared up as a result of his salad consumption too. Vets obviously say not to give your cats human food. Yeah, like it's a known fact to not give your animals human food, but Shaggy just appears to be built different here. Buffy can't really eat a lot of dry food. Like, I'll give her dry food. She's very picky eater, and she just has really bad digestive problems. Like, she'll eat dry food, and then she'll throw up. And I'll get her, like, a smaller thing for sensitive stomachs. She's been to the vet numerous times. She had two... Not RBIs. That's baseball. What is it called? The x-rays? 
MRI. She's had two MRIs. Oh, no, not an MRI, a CAT scan. Oh, that's... Just an x-ray, I think. No, it's a CAT scan for her. Well, she got an x-ray like to see what was going on in her stomach and nothing. Like she has been taken care of and they're just like, yeah, she just has a very sensitive stomach. Yeah, and she has a really refined palate. Yeah. So most of the time, Shaggy likes red butter lettuce or kale. Like that's what he usually eats. But if I, she said, but if I'm either making salad or getting one from a salad bar, I'll give him one thing, like one of the things like a tomato, cucumber, carrots, red cabbage, or on rare occasions, avocado. He also adores watermelon and cantaloupe in the summer and pumpkin seeds in the fall. Oh, that's cute. I know. So um, she kind of says that, like it's when he like goes through phases, like sometimes when Shaggy is over a certain flavor of wet cat food, he'll go on hunger strike and refuses to eat his food until he's given a side salad. Oh my God, drama. So it comes out that initially Dina found out, I guess, that the cat from the Salem Animal Shelter initially came from Mississippi. And like sometimes like really popular animal shelters will get animals shipped to them if they're really good at distributing them. So they believe that when he was a kit and he was a street cat and he probably like grew up on like just whatever Scraps. he could find. And that's what initially got him into like craving human food. I don't think it was her fault. I think she just got one that was like, no, like yeah. Shaggy needs to eat. Give me the food pyramid, baby. I've discussed this with a vet and she also has a pet that also has feral origins and he does the same thing she said. So as long as she's like making sure that he's not eating chocolate, raisins, grapes, or anything from the Allium family, it's okay in moderation. He's happy and healthy. So she just goes with it. It's very hard to change a cat. Let the cat live. Shaggy is out here so much. So there's a really funny video that we'll post on the Instagram of him eating. And he goes from his wet food to his salad. And it's like such a sharp crunch of the, the lettuce. I'm obsessed with it. And someone in the comments said, he's not eating. He's dining. <laughs> Shaggy, he has, he has, a, he doesn't have a meal. He has a dinner. You know what I mean? He has an occasion. He has an event. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell something to take a hike. You know what I'm telling to take a hike this week? I want to hear about it. Static on our goddamn couch. It's beyond the couch at this point. Every room in this house I touch, I get electrocuted. It is so dry in this bitch and I feel like there's nothing we can do. I cannot sit on our Bob's Discount modular sofa without getting zapped by Zeus. I wonder if any of our campers know what to do. Did you look into it? I did look into it. And they're like, do a humidifier. Guess what? We did a humidifier. I fucking, I rubbed the thing down with dryer sheets. Like it was a West Hollywood bathhouse. Like I've done what I can, well, but it seems to be getting, it seems to be getting worse. It's just so dry. The cat comes to sit on me and I go to boop her nose and I can see the little lightning, the static electricity from my finger to her nose. And she probably thinks, that I'm doing it on purpose, and then I feel bad about it. You know, you sat down on the floor next to the couch, and your hair was, like, sticking out of your arm and onto the couch like that York Peppermint Patty lady. Remember that commercial? We would need an industrial size humidifier because we have – this has always happened to me. Like, I always live in these, like, places that are kind of, like, open concepts. So even when I had an AC in New Bedford, like, my, my whole apartment was, like, a big open room. So it's, like, hard to cool off a space that big if you can't shut doors. So it's, like, we can't even, like, put a humidifier down there because it would just travel into the kitchen and upstairs. You know what I mean? It's, like, it's just going to be, like, hard to humidify. So I think we have to wait it out. Just keep shocking. Or maybe you could tap into these newfound powers and just harness it. Like, you need to focus. You need to really center yourself and, like, make this a business. Because one thing about us, we're going to turn it into a business. So you could sell electric electric current in a bottle. I'd buy one. I'll be your first customer. Oh, my God. Like that song, Lightning in a Bottle. You, that was written about you in the past. <laughs> they didn't know it yet, but they were writing about you all along. It kind of does sound like me reflecting on the lyrics. You're so right. But I'm sick of it. If any campers out there know what to do or have advice for us, please help us. Please. Yeah, we're getting zapped and zipped and zopped every single night on that <laughs> Come couch. on, zip, zap, zap. Come on, improv. Okay, so I'm sick of it. I'm sick of static and I'm sick of talking. What are you telling to take a hike? I'm telling my computer to take a hike this week. Um, my MacBook is five years old, and every time I open up a simple Google Chrome search, she starts screaming at me. It sounds like, uh, like a, a government helicopter is landing. 
It's like, girl, chill the fuck out, okay? I don't know wh who hurt you. It wasn't me. I've never run this computer hard. You run your computer hard. You're editing videos. You're doing stuff on Premiere Pro. Like, I'm sorry, you. I, I upload a photo to iPhoto and the thing's like having a panic attack. It's like, do you want to be here? Do you want to clock in? Do uh, you want to be a part of the, the job here? Because you're replaceable. And she's been pissing me off. Like, why? what is her problem? You hear her? Oh, I hear her. I came down in the middle of the night to grab a water bottle and your laptop was closed. We had been in bed for hours and it was running and it was hot. So I unplugged the charger and I came back up. I was like, can I turn your computer off? Because she's like not well. Or she was running like 105 fever. It's embarrassing. Like, grow up, Miss Mackey. But it's kind of funny. Do you guys know that when professional gamers computer gamers specifically they have those like big setups with their all their their uh, those i don't even know what they're called hard drives i'm not even sure these big boxes i'm such a tech they're modems yeah i'm a nerd i'm such a nerd i know all this stuff <laughs> so they have fans that literally blow on the modem yeah yeah it's like it's calm down computers need to figure it out if if you're doing a task just breathe if i were to go through every single day of my life screaming and like overheating i actually i'm always overheating but i keep it to myself <laughs> i don't get other people involved in my drama mm -hmm. you know what i mean uh, it was really funny i actually googled how long a macbook should last how long five to six years oh are we coming up on it egg on my face i think i got it in 2018 so i think i'm past it i oh, think wow. i'm like in her prime she's asking to get um a norwegian send-off in the lake uh, What's that called? A Viking a, funeral? A Viking funeral. So campers, I have this really great idea. I want us all to meet at dusk um, on the camp lake. And we're going to use one of our canoes. Then we're going to put my MacBook on there. I'm going to push her out into the middle of the lake. And I'm just going to run a YouTube video. And she'll blow herself up. Yeah. We don't have to light her on fire. Because I think she's any minute away. She's. I Thank God I have renter's insurance. Because this place is about to go up in flames. Because I want to listen to a video on YouTube. Yeah, I don't she's watch struggling. It. I keep it on min I, I minimize it just to give any chance for her to like calm, calm down. down. She can't. She's literally having a panic attack. I'm like, I didn't buy you to give me anxiety. Like, cover it up. I love how we're just throwing so much into the lake right now. Tennis balls, laptops. We discussed a couple weeks ago that there was no fish left because of some sort of poison. Because oh, we kept shocking. We shocked. It. <laughs> so it's like I'm not. I'm not worrying about the lake's properties right now. Lake if Canyon, we, not. We should hire a camp environmentalist to come work for the camp. Lord knows we need one. I ran into a girl from high school recently over Christmas. And it was so funny because you know you don't talk to people for like a decade. Like that was this girl. And we were like friends in high school. We weren't like super tight, but like we were friendly. We had classes together. And I was like, oh, what are you doing? Like how is like life post-grad, right? And I think a lot of people know what I'm doing because I don't stop posting on the internet, but I, I haven't caught up with a lot of people. And she was like, oh, I live in Oregon and I work on a reservation where I am like regrowing the population of salmon for this Native American tribe. And I was like, oh my God, that is like the coolest thing you could possibly say out loud. Like I would just like bring that up in conversation every single day. I, I rarely tell people I'm a content creator if they don't know. I'm in this class right now that I'll talk about again in two weeks. And it like four days in, I was still not talking about it. And then I had to say something that I was doing. And then people had all these follow-up questions. They're like, wait, you're an influencer? And I'm like, yeah, because I just like, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. I just get weird about it. However, if you were regrowing the salmon population, so how, what is she doing? Is she like lighting a candle and trying to get them to like, do the deed well the problem is that everyone thinks what they do is not interesting so then you ask them a follow-up question and they like deflect it and then go back to you it's like girl no i don't care about tiktok i care about these goddamn salmon right so i didn't even get the full gist i just got her position but she's working i think for the government but she's placed at like on a reservation and she's become really good friends with the local tribe all these things sound so crazy but it's true i love that she was always giving like patagonia like she was giving um, like REI. So it, it really is a natural progression for you. I actually went to school with another girl. This is so off topic, but also very cool. She's a park ranger. Now, how do you get that job? Imagine to my delight, I'm on Instagram one day and I'm scrolling and I see a picture of Sarah and she's in her full like- like Garb. Garb. Top hat next to the horse near a sequoia. I'm not even joking. And they get moved around. She does that. 
So what do you do as a park ranger? You just like look through your binoculars? I don't know. Well, ask the park ranger that comes to Camp Shady Birch. I feel like I have so many questions about things that people do. I still want to know how she's how she's getting the salmon to fuck. You know what I would do? <laughs> you know the um when people are pregnant, they use the the sticky bits and they put it on their belly and they play music like Mozart or whatever yep, to yep, the unborn yep. baby. So I would slap that shit on the outside of the fish tank and then I would just play like, I don't know, Pipe by Christina Aguilera and I would probably get the job done. The sticky bit has nothing to do with with like the the that's just how you like see it that doesn't have anything to do with like the baby's growing the goop no i'm not talking about no no, no i'm i'm not talking about like a sonogram a sonar yeah <laughs> an rei an we're amount, two ships an RBI. passing in the night right now we're not on the same page the headphones you know how you can play music for an unborn yeah, baby what was the sticky bit let's, let's it just... sticks it's like sticky it's like tape Oh, okay. I was thinking you're talking about sonogram, sonogram gel. No. You know what's funny about sonogram gel? It better be funny. Well, it's, it, you know, when people say, it's, you know what's funny, but it's really just like, you know what's interesting? Yeah. We should start saying, you know what's interesting, because it's not really funny. I bought one of these things off of TikTok that's like a, a, a like a, a skin firmer, firmer. It's like a metal thing that like sends electric current to like give you a snatch jaw. I forgot about that. Yeah, because one thing about those things, you have to use them every single day to see results. I try it once and I'm like, I don't know, it didn't work. Um, but <laughs> it comes with this gel that you put on your face in sections and then you go up like your jawline and like drag it up because my skin sink into the bottom of the ocean at this point. But I went on Reddit and everyone was saying like, oh, to, you don't have to buy the replacement gel through the company because it's so expensive. You can just buy like a jug of sonogram gel and that's like the same exact stuff. Oh. So, but I never got to that point because I'm not actively using it. Because when I was putting the gel on my face, you're supposed to put it in sections and then go up with the electric current. But I was doing it over my entire face. So by the time I went to the second side of my face for that side of my treatment, it had already dried. So it was genuinely shocking the fuck out of me, like electrocuting myself. And I was like, I don't know, it should probably hurt because it means it's working. And then I watched the video after and they're like, if it's hurting, you're not doing it right and you should add more gel. So I was just like sitting in pain, <laughs> shocking the fuck out of my jawline. And I still don't look any like snatched at all. Like, oh my God, that thing sucked. But it's like any skincare routine. If you're if you're committed, you're gonna get the results. But I Peloton once a month at this point. So I'm not committed to anything other than this show. I other come, than this show. I come here every single week. I'm committed to you campers, but um, yeah, none of that had anything to do with my computer overheating, but I was just in a storytelling mood. Maybe you can use KY jelly and then just rub your face on the couch to get the same effect. You know how we can figure out how salmon repopulate. How? Oh. There is a movie with Emily Blunt. It's called Salmon and Yemen. Something about the salmon and Yemen. Are you lying? Nope. Something about salmon and Yemen. And Emily Blunt's in it. And I think there's something to do with salmon in it. So we're going to have to watch that after this podcast. <laughs> we'll report back with the hard hitting news. I did one time when I was having kind of like a, a a midlife crisis a couple years ago. I was ready to up and move with my friend Hillary to Alaska and work at a cannery because she had worked at one before. And I was so I was spiraling. So I literally was like ready to go. I was like, all right, I'm pa I'm literally packing my bags. But then COVID happened. So do you know what the cannery <clears throat> was like? We're in Alaska because Alaska's huge. Ever know that? Y'all check it on that. Look at the size of Alaska and then drag it over. Like the United States, it's giant. So do you know where in Alaska? Are we talking Kitchikan? Talking Juno? The Kitchikanery. Yeah. Oh, please. So clever. Another business idea. Add it to the list. Add it to the list. Before we move on, which one is worse? Uh, the static electricity on our couch or uh, my computer overheating? I'm going to say the static electricity on our couch because it affects both of us. Me too, because I think my computer, after looking it up, I did realize it is at the age of mortality and we already put in the funeral and it seems like a really fun activity for the entire camp to get involved whereas the static electricity is just um a thorn to my side mm, we're gonna have a, a trough of scalped potatoes at the funeral oh that sounds amazing and nothing to drink do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk over either way i'm giving them my boondoggle keychain over Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week. Jonathan's doing that ugly heart finger thing. I don't like that. Me neither. It's like the new thing that the youngins are doing, like the, the pterodactyl fingers to make a heart. 
Yeah, I just saw a TikTok about it and everyone was like, we need to stop them from doing this. I'm doing the classic millennial heart. Yeah. Just like the two hands cupping, making the heart. Very classic. Very the, cute. This is the part of the show where we share who we're crushing on, who we're loving on, who's going to be able to send out the canoe with the dead laptop as their award for winning this week's Camper Crush of the Week. Jonathan, who is getting your admiration this week? The entire cast of the musical Six. Oh my God, I'm so excited to talk about this. So I surprised Zach on his birthday with tickets to go see this musical. It's called Six. It was so fun. And I am like one of the only people left in the world that actually like surprises. And I feel like life doesn't give you enough of them. And this was such a treat because it's such a dynamite, like, major show in the city that's been around for years. And I always think it's funny that we had never seen it. So I went in pretty blind, Mm -hmm. not really knowing what it was about. But, oh, my God, standing ovation. It was. was. It was. it was very unique. It was almost like not like a musical and more like like a pop starry play. Yes. But essentially it follows, it's a modern retelling of the lives of the six wives of Henry VIII and it's presented in the form of a pop concert. So during the show, each of his wives is Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, Slay, Jane Seymour, Anna of Cle- <laughs> Anna of Somewhere. <laughs> Sorry, there's a smudge on my clipboard. <laughs> it's not that I can't pronounce it or anything. I just, I can't read what it says. Catherine Howard and Catherine Parr. He loved the Cathy's. I don't think he loved them. I think they just didn't have a lot of names back then. Oh, they couldn't Where was Nevea? Yeah, where's Nevea? <laughs> where's Nevea? It's heaven spelled backwards. So during the show, each of the wives kind of like does their whole thing and and gets a turn with their own song and the retelling of like, basically they're competing for who suffered the most with the husband. And I thought it was, it was really incredible. I didn't know what to expect. Everybody who's seen it said it was incredible. Mm. Um, But I will say there was one character when it started who was like my least favorite character just because, I don't know, she was just... Her author was a character. I didn't say that. No, her outfit wasn't giving. Everyone had skirts that were like trim and like fit to their body and hers was below the knee and it was giving granny and it was just like not giving pops or like the rest of them. But it made sense after. Jane Seymour, um, who was actually played by Jasmine Forsberg and she sang this song. It was called Heart of Stone and when it came on, it's a ballad and I'm like, of course we have to have a a ballad. It's like the third song in after we're having like dance hits where I'm like popping my pussy in my seat trying to stand up Mm -hmm. and this ballad comes on. I'm like, okay, let's just get over with it. Um, But damn, by the end of it, she hit these notes and I was like, oh, vibrating my body was vibrating it was incredible i listened to the version on spotify does not do it justice yeah that always happens with stuff like that you need to it's supposed to be live yeah it's like mean girls like the new mean girls music musical everybody was like katie her vocal range is like i don't know made for the movies and mainstream i don't fucking know but she did incredible she's only been in the show for like two months oh my god when she was singing that ballad the the ending part of the song i had full body chills up my torso up both my arms and up to my neck i was like this is incredible the whole show was so cleverly written so many of it was actually a tiktok trends like i thought that was so fun how it's like oh, the sounds yeah yeah like so many like sounds on tiktok are from that that show and another amazing like if you're going to new york and you want and want to see something that's condensed not very long really amazing music and just girl power six is the show to pick i feel like we could do a whole thing about like if this is your vibe do this show because we've seen so many and there's some i would like never tell people to go see unless you've seen a bunch already because you don't want to like come in new york and see something that's like not amazing but this is like if you're a certain kind of person this would be the show to see it's really fantastic it was so and it was short it was like an hour and a half maybe maybe less than that so it was like the perfect length for anybody who like doesn't want to sit through like a really long show it was so fast paced. All the girls were on point. It was like the lights, everybody. It was just so, so in sync. And, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. the choreography. They didn't stop dancing. Every single beat was like a pop, pop, pop. And I was really impressed. I want to talk about being impressed. The people who wrote it, do you know about who wrote it? No. Lucy Moss and Toby Marlowe. They wrote this when they were in college and they are currently younger than us. 
No way. Yeah. The show's been running. They're from London, from the UK vibes. And uh, they won a Tony Award, two Tony Awards in 2022 for the best original score and best costume design. Well, maybe that's why it was so exciting because it felt very fresh. It felt very current. Like the jokes were like not, it was like, it felt like young people writing young jokes. I hate when old people write like young characters sometimes because I feel like they're missing the the nuance of some of the storytelling. It's like, oh, that's what you think young people do, but it's not really what young people do. And this felt like a young person wrote it, which makes complete sense. Yeah. It was so exciting. Like they had like a big reference to like Tinder and swiping in it, but it, it was funny and sharp and quick. And I thought that like, that's probably because they were actively using apps that have swiping on it. So yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. And I just, I love how the, all six of the women really supported each yes. other and like each of their roles and nobody was stepping on anybody's toes. But um, I also, I did find the video of her hitting that last note on her Instagram. So I'm going to post it. I don't know if there's going to be any copyright issues. I don't know, but I'll post it on her Instagram. Hopefully we won't. No, I think it'll be funny. I'll tag it. I think it yeah. it's, we're doing press for the show. At this yeah. Point. It's just absolutely incredible. Go Thank you for the show. Me. You're welcome. And then I was like, well, shit, because I have been not boycotting, but just avoiding what's the show? The, the Hamilton. Hamilton. I just, I'm not interested. I am adverse to Lynn Manuel Miranda. I don't know. Something about him just like stresses me out. I don't know what it is. I don't know because I I don't know I don't know him I don't know her and I don't know the show and I was like well shit wait maybe I should watch the show because maybe I'd be into it I think if now I'm learning that when everyone's into something on Broadway like there has to be magic there and like Hamilton is the biggest show of our lifetime besides Wicked maybe but I, I think Hamilton might even be bigger at this point so it's like what are we waiting for I wasn't even like I didn't know what Six was about but now that I've seen it I'm like oh I get it I completely get the hype so we should see it we should see it maybe we'll do that maybe we'll do that tonight while we're eating our our double half pounders no double quarter pounder I know I'm just being silly I'm being crazy I'm being goofy yeah you're so kooky I'm being loose loose lipped <laughs> thanks <laughs> sorry the energy drinks wearing off okay so what do what are you crushing on it's also something from my birthday oh um, I love an outdoor walk in New York City. Ah. I really do. So if anyone's a walker out there, and I know, I, I check in at the cabin. I do I do walker checks. I walk around each cabin. I say, Camper, are you a walker? And then everyone in the cabin raises their hands and says, I'm a walker. And then we all do a collective walk on Sunday mornings. We all bring a mug. We hold it really tight. And we just kind of peruse the camp. That's what we do here. Um, so I, my entire life, I've really, all joking aside, I've been a really big walker. I like love to go listen to music, get out, get five miles in and just get my steps in. I think it's a great time for me to clear my head, be inspired, get my legs moving, yada, yada, yada. So it's been really exciting to live in New York because walking here is just a feast for the eyes wherever you go. Like it's either going to smell bad, smell amazing, you're going to see something shocking, scary, cool. Like it just is always unexpected. It doesn't matter how many times you do the same loop. It's something new. So for my birthday, I had my hair cut in Greenpoint, which for us is like an hour and 10 minute walk where we live. And um, I think it's like just under five miles. So I asked you and I was like, hey, would you be down to do a walk on my birthday? It's sunny out, a little cold, um, a little, uh, but it was just such a treat. And I was so grateful that you did it with me because we had such a fun time walking from neighborhood to neighborhood and every neighborhood in New York just feels so different. And I really enjoyed it until something happened to you. Well, I just think it's very special that we can share the same experience but have different experiences. <laughs> it was your birthday. I wanted to do everything you wanted to do. So, of course, I'm going to walk with you. Lord knows I could use it. However, I did underestimate how cold it was. Did we get a, a record of how, how cold it was? Did no, we? it was 38 degrees, but it got up to 41 by the time we got there. But there was a really big wind chill. And that was the issue was the wind. It's always the wind chill that feels like if you will. So I had my big jacket on and I didn't wear a hat for like the first time in a long time because I was like, okay, we're going to go out to dinner and I don't want to have hat head when we go out to dinner and ha see the show and all that. Um, that was my mistake. My ears started turning red. I started getting that inner ear pain and ear when ache, things are will. too cold. Yeah. And I was like, shit, we need to find a store so I can pop in and grab a hat. We stop into like a CVS and a random other store that didn't have hats. We find a, a dollar general which everything's generally a dollar, but mostly $5. And I do find myself a hat. I pick it up, it falls off the hanger and right onto the nasty, dusty, dirty, crusty, covered in hair floor. It was 
I did not want to like make the situation worse in the moment because we had been like popping from store to store for this hat for you. The floor at which that hat fell on was I know. Oh my god, it like took my breath away how dirty it looked. Oh, I know. And, and it, it was the only hat. It was on a little a little hanger clip thing and the it broke one. off when I when I pulled it. That's no. like I didn't drop it. it. It like broke. Oh my god, gas at the hat, please. I love it. <laughs> well, it wasn't me because I still had it in my <laughs> hand. I wouldn't Wait, be I'm, so foolish. I'm supporting you. Thank you. Um and I was so cold, I didn't care. I put it on I put it on and I just kept it trucking. It was a heat sense hat. You're missing that detail. There was heat oh, technology. Not to brag. Well, I didn't want to brag. Yeah. And it wasn't a dollar general. It was five. What was it? It was a family dollar. Oh, well, sorry. I want to let the parent company know that you really enjoyed your heat sense $10 hat. $5 hat. $5 hat. Let's not get crazy. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry that you were cold, but once the hat was on, did you enjoy the rest of the once walk? Once the hat was on, I enjoyed the rest of my walk. I felt absolutely amazing. I get it. As someone who's like, who gets earaches from cold wind, it can be really, it can hurt. And it was, it, the wind was whipping. It was whipping. It was it was bad and you were like this is so fun and so great and i was not going to complain it was your birthday i would have walked for as long as you wanted to well thank your you day. i love i really enjoyed the walk there were so many great dogs out and people enjoying their saturday it was gorgeous out get out there and walk this weekend camper there's probably a camper listening right now who's on their walk i love that for you what song's been stuck in your head all week welcome to camp songs Welcome back to Camp Songs. They're having me sing at the Grand Old Opry soon. This is the part of the show where we share songs with you that have been stuck in our head all week. Jonathan, what song has been stuck in your head all week? I think this is going to be my cruise karaoke song. <gasps> really smart of you to start planning ahead. What is it? The song is You Gotta Be by Desiree. Oh wait, can I, can you sing a couple of songs? I'm not mad, I'm missing. Them. Herald what your mother said. Read the books your father read. Try to solve the puzzle in your own sweet time. Is that the chorus? No, it's you gotta be, you, you gotta, gotta be mad, you gotta be known, you gotta be wise. Everybody remembers that song, right? Your tone when you sing it, it's like that song was built for your register, which is really good to seek out for a karaoke song that's a smart choice also a crowd pleaser yeah I'm i expect to see everybody it. knows that well thank you find me at the cash wrap that is my register so, <laughs> so <laughs> this <hey>. song <laughs> was released on march 28th 1994 i didn't realize it was that old so the singer who goes by desiree her real name is desiree annette weeks uh she goes by desiree and she was born in London. She's a London gal. Oh. So according to her, the song is, quote, about having the inner strength to figure out who you are. The song was born out of me stopping myself and thinking every day how you gotta be something. You have to be cool and calm in one situation, and then you have to be bold and strong in another. True. Very true. She also drew inspiration for this song from a book she was reading called Creative Visualization by Shakti Gawain, uh, which she was reading after a traumatic breakup. And she said, I've always been blindly optimistic, and that book helped me rise from my melancholia. I swear by daily affirmations. And that's really what the song is. It's just like affirmations for yourself it's a song about yourself you know i feel like affirmations are really having a moment right now in media i didn't really know about them growing up maybe my parents were just cold and callous but it's nice to know that in the 90s she was really popping off with um that trend of just saying good things to yourself yeah and her story is interesting she's kind of a mystery i couldn't find a whole lot about her but the things i found out i would like to share she had no musical training and had no singing experience but she submitted her demo tape at age 22 and she got signed to sony like right away wow after 2003 she took a hiatus uh, from music to focus on her interest in naturopath naturopathy I don't know yeah. if I'm saying that right. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know what that means. And she wanted to be um, like a nutritionist. Yeah, uh, like a homeopathic mm. nutritionist. Yes, thank you. She also became a trained potter, a painter, and a jewelry maker. 
So she really did disappear from from the radio for a while. And then 16 years later in 2019, she released an album and then she kind of disappeared again. She seems like an information seeker. Like, you know, those people that you meet and they're just they're constantly doing something fresh and new because they just crave to learn. Yeah. She seems like that kind of woman. And I love that about her. I'm that kind of person, too. Yeah. I think you you are who you want to be. Yeah. Thank you. Also, I'm not going to get too deep into it because I don't want to pit women against women because I don't think it was their issue. I think it was who? Beyonce. What are, what are those two having in common? She, so Beyonce came out with a deluxe version of B-Day and had a song on it that was, <clears throat> it was Desiree's song. And in their contract, she had to keep the song name the same and she couldn't do a music video for it. And the song name was changed and she did a video for it. But I don't think it was Desiree who was who was putting this on. I think it was the company who was behind her. So again, I don't want to make it look like she was just suing Beyonce, but, um, but they did settle out of court. She won that. And then Janet Jackson did the same thing, like took one of her songs. This one was like not credited and she won a lawsuit against her too. I think our first guest on the show should be a try guest panel with Desiree, Beyonce and Janet Jackson. And we're going to get to the bottom of this. I think we have connections now on network and maybe our network could reach out to Beyonce, yeah, maybe she could come to the camp and talk to us about it. Yeah, I have them in a group chat. Can you imagine all, us all at like a camp, a camp like fire? We're sitting there like with our blankets, and we're like, "Okay, B, tell your side." <laughs> <laughs> There's like a mosquito buzzing around the microphone. <laughs> we're all just like holding like our, our mold wine and our like mugs, and we're like, "That would be so <laughs> fun." Let's get them on the horn. Uh, but that's my song. I think she's interesting. I don't know. I just kind of like felt, you know me. I stay falling down rabbit holes. I need a, a bungee cord to pull me out of that. No, it's cool. I think it's fun, especially if people, I'm sure a lot of our campers know that song, but they didn't know that story. So, And I didn't know that story. I thought it was great. So it was great research. Thank you. Oh, also they pulled, literally when she won the lawsuit, they, outside of court, you know, for an undisclosed amount, they pulled the um, the deluxe B-Day from the shelves and she was compensated for the hundreds of thousands of copies that were sold of her song wow yeah so what song are you singing um my song this week is on my mama by victoria monet Ooh. are you guys familiar with victoria monet i feel like everybody has to be by now she is she just currently she just won the grammy for yeah. best new artist and that's what kind of like made me think about her because i was so happy that she won it and i was going through her music and i was like i want to talk about um victoria monet this week so yeah so um on My Mama is an R&B song, and it's also about positive um, like self-affirmations, about feeling great both on the inside and the outside. The energy is the kind of music where you're driving and doing your little sway back and forth, like a little ooh, ooh, ooh. And then you're feeling hot, and then you're like, wait, I, I am that bitch. Wait, that's me. Like, it really gives that kind of, like, hot girl, I'm, I'm in control of my life energy. And I think our campers need that. Like, we all need that. We all need to feel like that girl. Can never get enough. So the video is really great. She can dance. I love how pop music is going back in this direction where it's like, no, you need to do the choreography. I need my pop girlies. And she's R&B. But I just like love when they're performing on full cylinders. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just go for it and dance it out. Like as a gay, as a little gay boy, I was watching Shakira. I was watching Christina Aguilera. I was watching Beyonce. I was watching Britney. And they were pumping out the choreography. And then in like the late 2010s, I feel we were kind of taking a break. I say, wait, 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 I need a little two-step. And I think since the pandemic, the girls have been really giving it. And this video is awesome. Um, I think she's super great. Something interesting about her is um, she's been in the industry for so long. She won Best New Artist at age 34. I didn't know she was that old. Yeah. She's been doing this for so long. And I think you're going to love this. Let me clarify. I don't mean like that old. I just mean I I thought she was younger than that. Yeah. I thought she was probably in her 20s. But like then you find out. It's like, okay, like best new artist at 34. That's so awesome. She's a talent. So in her early life, outside of her dance rehearsals, Victoria discovered her love of poetry, which turned it into songwriting. Through this experience, she learned about Rodney Jerkins, a.k.a. Dark Child, and decided to add him on MySpace. Shortly after that, he invited her to come to Los Angeles oh and audition God. for a new girl group he was forming, Purple Rain. That is so random. I knew you'd love that. I knew you'd love that. Um, the group landed a record deal with Motown a year later, but was dropped before releasing any music. After the group's disbandment, Monet turned to songwriting to earn money while she was waiting for her own music to career to um, build up. The first song she wrote on a track was for Diddy Dirty Money's 2010 build up. 
Um, and then like she just continued to write music as she was recording her own. But for a long time, her songwriting was more lucrative and more successful than her own music. She's basically written any Ariana Grande song you've ever heard. Like they've been longtime writing partners and friends. Yeah. Um, but also written for like Brandy and T.I. She did Monopoly. With, yeah. I know she did other songs, but she was like featured on Monopoly. Yeah. You know? And she also like wrote like side by side. Um, What is it? Five Rings? Six rings? Seven rings. Seven rings. We oh, got there. Almost there. And that song has over a billion streams. So I think like all of her songs combined have billions and billions of streams that she's wrote. But um, it wasn't until Jaguar 2, which was her official debut album um, in 2023, that she kind of took center stage. And like, I don't know, people started to recognize her for her own personal music versus just being a writer. And look where it got her. It got her to... Um, best new artist at 34 and it just really excites me because i think a lot of times i do i do i like put myself on these like um check marks it's like oh by 30 i need to be yeah. here and mm -hmm. it's like no i think it, everybody does yeah yeah and i think this is showing like hey like i love this i'm gonna keep doing it and i'm gonna i'm gonna make it and i'm gonna make it my way and she did like she took a detour for a while and was writing other people's music and now she's like well now it's my time to step into it and that's what i was gonna say it's so great especially after being told by by many people for many years that you've got the talent to write and sing but it's you know it's not your time to be the one front facing with the microphone well so. it's funny you say that because at the vmas this year a lot of her fans were like oh we want you to perform why aren't you performing tonight like yada 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 people we're like, where, where, where are you? Yeah, where's Victoria Monet? And she tweeted back. She said, I see your advocation for me to have performed tonight, and I'm so grateful to you. Sincerely. My team was told it's too early in my story for that opportunity, so we will keep working. The VMAs didn't want her because it's too early in her story. They just thought it wasn't the right market or she wasn't good enough or wasn't popular enough. And then look at that. Six months later, best new artist. Um, VMAs really messed that one yeah, up. Yeah, they really fumbled the ball. They but really fucked up. Even a gracious response. You Truly. know what I mean? A true superstar through and through getting her flowers. And I'm so excited to see where she goes next because her stage presence, her writing, her music, her choreography. It's was really say, dancing. It's, it's so just good. like superstar material. And I think... Ariana Grande's always known that. And I'm hoping that on Ariana Grande's new album, there's a feature for her again because it's she makes great music. They make great music together. Yeah. And um, the album's great. So On My Mama, if you're looking for some really fun, vibey, pump-up, self-affirmation music. Love that. And uh, and You Gotta Be by Desiree. Yeah, so as always, playlist is in the uh, description of the episode, also on YouTube for free if you want to join in on our Camp Songs playlist. If you haven't already, we would greatly appreciate it if you give us five stars and a good review. Thank you so much for all the reviews that came in when we asked last time because we got signed. Everybody has been so supportive and kind. I was like, damn, not everybody rooting us on for like having ads. And I was like, wait, I love no. this community. You guys are awesome. We We're lucky you. for the audience. We're we very lucky. Very lucky. You yeah, guys are so supportive. Truly appreciate you guys. We, we wouldn't be where we are without you. Yeah. So we'll see you next week. We'll see you the week after. We'll see you for a long time. And with that being said, lights, lights out, out campers. campers.